everybody, this is Joe. Thank you for watching my Giga Texas construction update video. Hey everybody, it's Joe. Another Friday here at Giga Texas. It's the 22nd of September, 2023. And as we know that the production is still in a pause, however, there's some actually good signs that I'm starting to see, both by rumors about uh, more employees coming up back to work, and then next week we're gonna see the bulk of them back to work. But also looking at the parking lots, as you can tell by this image here, there's a lot more cars in the parking lots. Now for a Friday, this is actually a lot of cars. So I think this is another very positive sign. Before I get into a few other highlights from the video today, I wanna to talk about uh, something that I mentioned in my previous video and do a little bit of a correction. So let's get into that right now. On my previous video on the 20th of September, I saw these items being delivered and I did a little bit of speculation about what they might be. Here it looks like a, another smaller bridge crane has been delivered. Uh, we can see uh, some of the materials uh, have been unpacked and then we see some of the other materials still in that uh, semi-clear packaging on the uh, pallet on the left. Now, as you saw with the text that I overlaid, I was not correct. These are not bridge cranes, but they are a different kind of crane. And thankfully, I have great viewers such as Gregor Truck and also Patreon such as Desi Doolin. Uh, they immediately provided me some information and links so that we could determine what these actually are. Now, starting with the stenciled Mias on the items that were delivered and going to the links that Gregor Truck and Desi Doolin provided, we can see that this is a multifunction pallet stacker crane, and it's from the Mias Group, which is from Germany. And this is an important part of inventory management and also movement of very large items uh, for stacking, and that helps with the vertical integration of parts and manufacturing that Tesla is using. Let's uh, let the Mias Group uh, short video here talk a little bit more and give you some examples uh, visually of what the system is and how it operates. Here in Eching near Munich, we have an excellent infrastructure and ideal conditions for our teams to offer best solutions and services for our customers. Mias is the partner for system integrators and general contractors with a clear focus to offer the best solutions and services in the field of automated storage and retrieval systems. With our experienced staff and years of competence and expertise in storage retrieval machines, with our own development and manufacturing, we are a reliable partner for our customers. Mia stacker cranes are the core piece of efficient and high-performance automated warehouse concepts. Mias can handle almost all weight classes and requirements, both in load handling equipment and stacker cranes, and therefore we are the strong and reliable partner in all branches of industry. One striking advantage is that we can offer load handling devices, stacker cranes, and if needed, onboard controls from a single source and starting with design through installation all the way to after sales service. We bring our many years of experience alongside with a lot of passion to the table from the very beginning of a concept through to the final delivery. This results in solutions for our customers that are precisely tailored to their requirements so I'm glad to be able to provide this correction to my original assessment of thinking they were bridge cranes. And now that we know that they are pallet cranes and how they operate uh, is helpful and informative. I also hope that this puts into more context just the amount of interior changes, production capability enhancements, and a lot of the machinery and other equipment that is being installed and has been installed here at Giga Texas over the last several months. This helps increase the overall capacity of Giga Texas. And I think you should think of that in a very positive way as well. So I hope that you enjoyed that information about that uh, pallet stacking uh, crane that uh, was delivered here just uh, two days ago. And also just get an understanding of what else is going on inside the factory as they continue to build out uh, General Assembly Lines 2 and 3 and also do upgrades to General Assembly Line 1 along with a lot of other uh, upgrades and uh, new equipment being installed, all of which we've been talking about here on this channel for more than a year. Uh, speaking of which, there's a news story that just came out yesterday of interest here at Giga Texas. As you can see here, they are talking about uh, right now, uh, there's around 20,000 or so employees working here. These are direct employees. But by the time Cybertruck 
is fully ramped up probably in the next year or two, they're going to be up to about 60,000 employees here at Giga Texas, which is really amazing. And what that means for the larger area around Austin. Also in that same article, they mentioned that because of the growth of the employees, there's not enough parking here and they need a larger multi-story parking garage. And as if you've been watching my videos for the last year, I've shown you the permits. We've discussed about where it was going to be located. I've been showing you all of the construction up to this point. And it's kind of neat to see that the news is finally caught up to what we've been seeing here on the channel for about eight months. So anyway, a uh, couple other things I want to talk about really quickly on the west side of the highway. That end of line facility is getting its wall panels installed now. So more steel, more concrete being poured on the south end and wall panels being put up uh, on that structure. So they're really moving quickly. And the other thing that I want to talk about is over at the battery cathode plant. Those pneumatic blenders that we talked about two videos ago have now been completely moved into that uh, south second floor of the battery cathode plant as we discussed and uh, we talked about how that was going to happen. They have a very interesting crane. The crane has to be able to lift and reach inside that uh, section. So it's got large counterweights on the other side. Now, if you've watched Starbase and you watched when they put the uh, underground piping system for the water deluge system, they use something very similar uh, to position those pipes. So it's kind of neat to see the similarity between what we saw at uh, Starbase and also here at Giga Texas. A lot more to talk about in the video today, so we'll get right into it. Thanks always for watching. I hope you have a great weekend. Take care. My drones are ready and raring to go. Let's go flying over Giga Texas. We're starting off on the far southwest side on the west side of the highway. I wanted to give you this good view of the contractor parking lot. Part of the reason why I want to show you this is just to get a sense for how active this site is today. And also we'll see on the east side of the employee parking lot is also full. This is that clearing that's on the extreme southwest side of the uh, property that Tesla owns. You can see that they are doing more earthwork here. They're using this dirt to help fix the grade in the area just to the south of the end of line facility. And also they're preparing this site maybe for some future construction as well, but a lot of activity on this side of the site. As I cross over these uh, power lines, I'll bring this uh, drone down and you can see how the material staging yard looks today. On the center left bottom, we can see some of those large stainless steel kind of uh, vent enclosures. These are very similar to what we've seen on the northwest corner of the factory. So uh, maybe we'll see this being installed uh, maybe on the new extension of the building once it's completed or somewhere else. Uh, but I'll keep an eye out for that. Here's where all that dirt's being brought to continue to improve this grade. Uh, most of it has been completed now, as you can tell by the expansion of the future outbound lot. But they're trying to finish this one section here that's between the warehouse on wheels yard on the left and this completed uh, graded location here uh, next to the end of line facility. At the time of my flight, we can see that concrete was just being finishing, uh, finish up being poured here on this new section and they are finishing up uh, some of the trench work on the left-hand side of the screen for that last large section. But here are some of those riding trowelers are busy uh, preparing the surface for its final uh, look. Also, there's three kind of um, inset sections here in this particular concrete area, and that's uh, maybe for some structure to be added, or maybe there'll be uh, some heavy items such as maybe a vehicle lift put there. Uh, here's where they were just finishing up the concrete pour 
uh, as I was uh, flying today. The pump truck is uh, kind of uh, getting ready to leave. So for the most part, all of the concrete has been poured. They just have that one small section remaining. And I think when they finish uh, leveling it out, it will fill it out. As we continue to fly towards the west, I wanted to give you a good sense of the changes here on what will be the outbound lot. You can see these trailers. Um, some of the kind of the brown steel on the left and some of those concrete pipes, not a lot of steel left because most of it has been installed into the building now. We also see some more trenching here, installing, in this case, the concrete pipes for the underground water management system. I had a viewer ask, when do they use the concrete versus the corrugated steel pipes for the underground water management system? And that's a good question. The concrete pipes are normally used where there's a higher load rating above where they are installed. In this case, they're gonna have this outbound lot with a lot of vehicular traffic, so they want the concrete ones. And then areas where it's not quite so much, they will use the uh, corrugated steel pipes. The west side of the end of line facility is getting most of its wall decking installed, all those panels. It looks like there's also kind of shelf units on the uh, side of the building that may be for uh, heating and ventilation systems that will be installed later, but uh, that'll be something I'll watch to see how that transpires. You can see a lot more of the decking materials has been delivered on the left-hand side of the screen. And then here, as we fly over the newly poured concrete patch, I'll turn the drone back towards the north. This will give us a good view of how this structure is coming along. They have that uh, white uh, fireproof paint being added to most of the steel. Um, you can also see that in some sections, there's large open spaces without columns in the middle. And I think that's to help with the vehicular movement that's going to be happening within this structure. We can also see more of the wall decking or the wall panels being installed here on the north east corner of the building. And then as I turn around, we can see how the notched end of this part of the building appears today. Last time we were seeing, they, was, they were putting in that last column for the roof on the uh, uh, edge where the uh, walls are. And it looks like that's all completed now. And again, it looks like there's gonna be at least one large uh, door for access into that part of the building. You can see this long HDPE pipe that's been fuse welded together, trailing off to the upper right. And also the horizontal drilling operation is uh, very busy today. In fact, when we cross over to the other side of the highway, I'll show you the actual uh, drill in motion. Here's a view over the highway back where the horizontal drilling uh, operation was underway. And then here amongst the blue fence structure, you can actually see the drill spinning right now and uh, the actual drilling is underway. And what they may be doing is widening and expanding the particular bore here. And eventually you can see that uh, conduit coming out of that trench in the upper uh, right-hand side of the screen. Those will all go to this section and then they will go through this bore it's most likely going to have a treated water pipe, that large HDPE pipe that we saw, but also the conduit's going to go through there as well. Another section of concrete work being prepared here. And then next to the uh, main entrance, we can see that for the most part, all of the steel work is completed, the stainless steel, the lighting system, the stone glass, uh, black, shiny material has been all installed. In fact, the crews are doing some polishing work on it right now. And all of the plywood protecting panels around that uh, trapezoid have been removed as well. You can see all the concrete is being cleaned up. So it looks to me like the uh, bulk of the work here is now completed. I uh, know that there's also some work going on just on the inside of the doors, but uh, for those thinking that this is related to Cybertruck delivery, I think this is a great sign. Uh, here's a good top-down view just to get a good sense of uh, the work that's going on and also just how shiny this material is. And overall, I think it's really coming together well, and hopefully this will herald a Cybertruck uh, delivery event fairly soon. But uh, we shall see. We got to get the production uh, started back up again, and uh, we'll talk about that more through the video. Here we see that excavation work next to the wall continuing. 
Um, it looks like they may be doing some of these white pipes through that area as well. Some of them are arrayed out here with the materials. And then here we can see more of the uh, items that will be moved inside and are part of the continued expansion and the addition of General Assembly Lines 2 and 3. All of the pallets here, these red and white pallets, uh, looks like a lot of them have been moved in. There's still some being repositioned here. But uh, the fact that they are moving inside, I think, is yet another great indication that we're getting close to production resuming. Some more deliveries on these trucks uh, here on this side. Some steel uh, ducting on the left-hand side going inside. And uh, here a few more uh, items being delivered here. Uh, and they got the uh, marking that they're for Zone X, also for that uh, Cybertruck uh, uh, area. We saw some other equipment, some robotic uh, pre-assembled items being delivered on my previous video here as well. The south end continues to see the bulk of the work as the continuous flight auger pile drilling system. And here they are in operation again, those two large cranes. They continue their march to the south and then to the west across this entire facility. And uh, the work is uh, it still has a way to go. You can tell by all of the rebar cages on the ground. I'll give you a good view of that here in just a second. But all of those cages that are in existence and then what they're building are all going to go into the bores for these piles. So uh, that gives you an idea that there's still, I don't know, many dozens more yet to uh, be installed. But as I pull away, this gives you a good view of that drilling operation, the location, and all of those rebar cages here in the foreground and some of the workers getting ready to begin the uh, shift here since it's right after sunrise uh, here at Giga Texas at the time of the flight. The south end uh, extension of Stamping 2 continues. More of the uh, wall panels being installed, uh, some remaining on the upper left to be installed, but we can also tell that insulation is now being installed on this corner, and then they'll put the other wall panels on the uh, outside. Uh, so, you know, this looks like it's uh, meant to be at least semi-permanent. Uh, we'll be watching to see what the uh, final look is and how the extension of the building will tie into this new item. We can see more of the blue wall panels uh, has been installed where the windows are. More of the windows have been uh, removed and those uh, uh, stud uh, cages put back in to replace the windows. Just a small section of windows remaining to be removed. And then again, some more of the materials in these two large tanks on the southeast side of stamping, along with more materials and more deliveries on the east side of the building. So let me bring the drone up and I'm going to reposition to give you a good view, uh, overview of the entire south end to see how it looks today. Good look at the river road with the new paving, all of the markings, and how the entire south end looks today, plus this uh, concrete uh, intersection, and then more of the road work moving up towards the north parallel of the building. Uh, we can also see at the uh, bottom center of the screen, there's this excavation work going on. This is to uh, prepare the, this entire area to connect the new road on the left to the old road that has a little bit of a curve in it. And I think they're going to just uh, straighten that out and then it will be a long parallel road once they are finished. It's a good sense of the materials and the, the activity on this side of the building. Also the stain work, you can tell that it continues to progress towards the north and then there's more areas with the windows covered in plastic where they're going to extend even further that white stain work. As I pull away, give you a good view of where the multi-level parking garage will be constructed, the grade work that is uh, well underway now, also the channels to redivert the water around this area, some of the riprap uh, broken up stone and the bottom of some of the channels, and also just how this uh, north side continues to uh, transform and develop as well. Now, in this uh, area directly ahead of the drone, we are seeing what looks like to be a series of underground pipes being put together in kind of a manifold system. 
They're using the concrete pipes, which suggests that there's going to be heavy traffic over this particular area. And the fact that there's so many of the pipes means that they expect to see a lot of water passing through that as well. So with the pullback, this gives you a good idea where that is located in relation to the East Warehouse on Wheels and also the outbound lot. As I travel over these uh, contractor trailers in the parking lot and also the sedimentation basin with some of the water, this is a good view of the testing and calibration lot and how it is just completely empty. There's really nothing going on here today. As I cross over this road, you can see that outbound lot. All of the transport trucks continue to be idle and parked here today. There's virtually no vehicles in the lot at all with one exception, and we will uh, reposition the drone and fly over to take a look at the very lonely cyber truck that is here today. And it's positioned uh, near a transport truck, so it's possible that it's getting ready to move uh, off-site sometime today, but uh, uh, we'll have to see how that goes. But here it is. Uh, they keep it with a car cover so that it's very difficult to tell that it's a cyber truck, but uh, uh, this is the only one here today, and uh, I'll just uh, turn the drone around and just give you a good look at uh, how it uh, appears. There are actually three more cyber trucks on site that's over by the crash test facility, and I'll show you that uh, a little later in the video. But as I pull away here, this gives you a good view of where the Cybertruck is in the outbound lot and where it is in relation to the employee parking lot and also the main factory. Now, as I uh, get ready to fly up over the road here and the East Warehouse on Wheels, I'll try to give you just a good perspective of how this East Side looks today. On the top of the screen, the employee expansion lot is actually pretty full, and so is the regular parking lot, especially for a Friday. And this is consistent with more of the workers coming back and getting ready for next week when they all come back to start getting the factory ready to resume production. At the south end of the battery cathode plant, we can see that those four pneumatic blenders have been moved inside. This is that crane and it has the counterweights on the kind of the boom here. And that's because it needs to be able to pick up and then maneuver the blenders, which you can see all four of them installed inside here with this zoom in. Uh, but they need to be able to do that in such a way to go through that opening and then do the installation. And so hopefully with this uh, good zoom in, this gives you a really good sense of how that installation is uh, coming along, how the boom type uh, uh, extension of the crane uh, was operational. And then with the guide uh, ropes here and the workers uh, controlling it, uh, they're just trying to make sure that the crane stays stable as it uh, finishes the installation of the last of those four blenders and is getting ready to be extracted out of that large opening. The crash testing lot has had a, a lot of uh, changes. You can see that the uh, paving has been completed on the south and the west sides. As I zoom in, you can also get a good sense of what's going on on the inside here. Uh, that brown crash wall, got some concrete barriers. We have the steel superstructure with some of those green lighting and probably some camera systems as well. And uh, it looks like there's a small workshop in uh, uh, set up using some of those concrete barriers as well. Now on the east side here, we see a couple of things. One, more of the outfall channel for the stormwater pipe being prepared with formwork for concrete. We also see one more of the cyber trucks still waiting here with the car cover. Uh, I think it's uh, destined to go inside as well. And the other two cyber trucks are actually located in this section here on the north end of the facility. They've been using these containers to kind of fill out this portion of the space between the building on the right and the covered uh, crash test facility on the left. And you can see that one of the cyber trucks is on the rotisserie and then right next to it underneath uh, the cover and where the uh, vehicle lift is, we can see the second cyber truck. All of them still have car covers on. Um, and as I zoom in, this gives you a really good look at how this appears today. 
but uh, it's very likely that we're going to see these used for crash testing. They also have some Model Xs and Model Ys that are probably also going to be used for crash testing, some of which to test out the facility itself, and then some of it may be just to get data on the vehicles as well. But as I pull back and keep it zoomed in, that was a really good view of how that structure looks today. And then the zoom out gives you a good idea of where that paving work is done and some of the red markings, the wade pit itself, the entire east side of the battery cathode plant, the cell test lab, that smaller steel structure just in the middle of the screen, and then how the north end of the facility looks today. As I pull back more towards the northeast, I just wanted to give a good sense of the material stored here. Those two stainless steel tanks are still waiting to be installed, and generally how this north part of the battery cathode plant uh, continues to transform. You can see the work for the receiving doors, that uh, white uh, railing system around the concrete apron. More trench work now, heading kind of uh, towards the east. Just underneath the lift station, we can see the concrete uh, vault boxes and the circular well, and also a manhole cover. It gives you an idea what the grade is going to be here when it is completed. More trench work on the left-hand side of the screen. Uh, all of the steel corrugated pipes still waiting to be installed on the right-hand side of the screen. A blue trench box just passing underneath the drone. And then this large section here with the, some of the pipe sticking up is where they also have some more of that steel corrugated pipe being installed. You can see some here with some of the gravel being put around that pipe uh, before they fill the rest of the trench in. The chiller plant still continues to have quite a bit of activity. There's a new scaffolding on the north side with some stairs. Uh, otherwise, just the similar kind of work we've seen on the northeast side of the dye shop. We can see the work continuing here, putting forms uh, to continue this uh, construction of that uh, concrete slab. And as I pull away, this gives you a good view of the north end of the dye shop that uh, covered what I think is a furnace or a kiln. And then how this uh, west side continues to transform more of the steel corrugated pipe, getting ready for installation here, probably along the side. Um, we also see some work going in where the windows are going to be installed. It looks like they're just doing some more preparatory work on the scaffolding. We see another trench box on the right-hand side. On the left, the on the ground, the windows still waiting for installation. And then here uh, in this trench with the trench box, it looks like they're pouring some concrete down into the base of this particular uh, trench, preparing for the next uh, stage of construction. Actually, it looks more like gravel rather than concrete, but they're lining the bottom of that uh, particular trench. As I bring the drone up over the power lines, I'll give you a good look at the old uh, housing complex, how the grade work continues. They've removed almost all of the hill, just a little bit remaining by the road. And then as I pull away, I just wanted to give you a sense of the employee parking lots, this overflow lot here, the main parking lot. Uh, as I mentioned, for a Friday, this is actually very busy. Um, normally, we don't see quite as much uh, vehicles so I think this is just another confirmation of the fact that employees are coming back to work and they're getting ready to uh, uh, get the factory uh, prepared to bring production back online, which I think is uh, outstanding. Looking right across uh, Tesla Road, we can see that trench work for the conduit continuing just on the north end. If we pass over the temporary trailers for some of the Tesla offices, we can see the temporary electrical switch yard on the left, the full a new permanent electrical switch yard just to the top right. And then here as I zoom in, you can see that uh, the crews are getting ready to put more of the wiring through the conduit. I think if you look at the workers in the truck next to those spools, it gives you a really good sense of scale of just how large these are and how much of the pretty thick conduit or the electrical wiring going through the conduit actually is. It's also a good view of those two control trailers on top of that underground vault and the work that is continuing. And of course, the, the transformers, one of which is now operational in the new uh, switch yard helping to power Giga Texas. As I fly to the north, one of the things I wanted to show you is the work here next to this uh, pole, the underground trenching for all of the conduit that extends to the north end of the Megapack is uh, 
continuing, and it's actually very close to the pole now. So we'll see the last part of the conduit being installed. And then after this, it's all ready for the power cables to be run through the conduit. So getting really close to having the capability of running power, at least to the north side of the mega pack from the grid. As we cross over the power lines, you can get a good sense of where that trench work is going next to the trees over to the north end of the mega pack site and generally how the mega pack site uh, looks today. More of the large spools on the left, they're pulling the wires through over to where you see the workers next to that white truck. And then we also see some workers on man lifts here next to this large transformer doing some more uh, electrical uh, wiring and uh, just making sure that all of the final connections have been completed. Also, the cable tray trench on the bottom has had covers put onto it now, uh, at least most of it, and so that's really a great sign. And then as I pull away, there's a good view of where that cables are being put through the conduit from the upper left through over to where the workers are in the bottom right of the screen. As I zoom back out, there's a good view of how the mega packs themselves appear today, the perimeter fence, the holes along the fence for the lighting systems, and also just how the uh, workshop and some of the materials on this south end look today. Uh, finally, here on this side of Tesla Road, I'll give you a good look at the continuing trenching here underneath the power lines. Looks like the red concrete's been poured on top of the conduit, which is a great sign, meaning that the uh, trenches are getting ready to be filled back in. So for today, one of the things I want to do to end the video is cross back over the highway. I want to show you some developments with the expansion of Tesla Road. And as we've talked in the past, uh, there was a, a permit to basically widen and improve the entire intersection here with Farm to Market 973. You can see that the paving work has been completed. They've marked the newly paved section. And now the old section is getting uh, broken up that uh, uh, old pavement. I think that's so that they can uh, improve this entire intersection. You can see where the intersection is starting to develop and then also along the entire right side of Farm to Market 973 all the way down uh, to the uh, end of that road, it's being widened as well. So they're going to increase from two to four lane road here. And this is going to be important because of all of the truck traffic that is going to be entering and exiting uh, Giga Texas, particularly to the new end of line and outbound facilities on the west side. So as we fly back towards the main factory, we can get a sense of Tesla Road on the left, some more of the material staging for all of the steel parts on the right, also where the welding shop is to do some of the modification of the steel, and of course, Giga Texas itself uh, across the highway. I hope that you enjoyed everything that we talked about and what we saw throughout the video. Thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it, and I hope that you have a great weekend. Take care.